Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a rational equation. We have 6x plus 5 quantity squared equals 35 divided by 3x squared plus 5x plus 2. Now, the original problem, uh, this was taken from a book um, in Russian. can't remember the name of the book, but I could probably share with you a link uh, or the title later on if you ask for it. But anyways, the original problem wasn't like that, but I wanted to make it a little different. And also, uh, you know, it kind of doesn't fit the screen when it's too long. Just kidding. Of course it does, but it doesn't look that good. Anyways, I just modified a little bit and made it into a rational equation. Originally, it was a polynomial. And to be able to solve this problem, we're going to turn this into a polynomial. So you're going to see the original version as well. So let's go ahead and cross multiply. That gives us 6x plus 5 quantity squared multiply by 3x squared plus 5x plus 2 equals 35. Great. Now, if you expand all of this and multiply together, obviously you're going to get 36x squared multiply by 3x squared. That's going to give you 108x to the fourth power. To be exact, when you distribute the whole thing, you're going to get the following. which is a quartic equation. And good luck solving that. There's a quartic formula, quartic formula that depends on the cubic. And trust me, it's a little complicated. But of course, you can look for a way to factor this. Since we're looking for nice solutions, there should be a nice way to factor it. And I can give you the factors, no worries, because Wolfram Alpha does give us the factor. So why not share with you, right? So the, the factors of this quartic are going to be these. And obviously, we were able to factor it into two quadratics, which is fairly easy to solve. You can go ahead and solve each one, and that's going to be the answer. But get like, this is not solving the problem, right? This is just using a computer system, whatever, to find the solutions. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for an intelligent solution. And a lot of times people say, hey, these problems are contrived. You know, the solution, you already knew the answer. Yes, we do. That's the point. These are competition level problems. And I can't really tell you exactly like what grade level, but these are high school level problems most of the time. But some middle schoolers can solve it too, obviously. Uh, but anyways, um, these are competition problems and they have some tricks in them, right? That's the goal. Anyways, so let's see how we can uh, proceed with the problem. Not like this, but from uh, here. Let's go ahead and rewrite that. 6x plus 5 quantity squared multiplied by 3x plus, oops, I already gave it away, right? So I'm supposed to write the original one. So that will be 3x squared plus 5x plus 2. Okay, great. Anyways, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to factor the quadratic, the second one, because it's factorable. First of all, notice that 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. That tells you that x equals negative 1 is a solution. Therefore, x plus 1 is a factor. So we can write this as 6x plus 5 quantity squared. I'm sorry, I didn't show that clearly. But yeah, 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. Therefore, x plus 1 is going to be a factor. Great. So what happens to the other factor? Well, you can easily derive that. It's going to be 3x plus 2. Awesome. And this is equal to 35. Now, here's the trick. I have 6x plus 5. Can I get 6x plus something else? Yes, I can because both 1 and 3 divide 6. In other words, 6 is divisible by the coefficient of x here and the coefficient of x here. That's real cool. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply both sides of this expression by 12. And why 12? Because 12 is uh, 6 times 2, and we need a 6 here. And we need a 2 here to make 6x and 6x. Make sense? Hopefully it does. Now, let's see how we can proceed. I'm going to multiply. Obviously, 6 times 2 is 12. So I'm, I can multiply x plus 1 by 6 to get 6x plus 6. And I can multiply 3x plus 2 by 2 to get 6x plus 4. That is equivalent to multiplying by 12. And on the right-hand side, 35 times 12 is the same as 70 
times 6, which is 420. A lot of times, uh, that's a shortcut that I use for multiplying numbers that end in 5 uh, by evens, which is a good shortcut in my opinion. Anyways, you can mentally multiply. Now, notice that uh, coefficient of x is 6 everywhere. And not only that, but also these terms are consecutive. Ignore the square for now. Great, so I can use my favorite method, which is substitution. Yay! I'm going to call this, uh, let's see, what should I call that? Y. And you know why. If I call that Y, this is going to be Y plus 1, and this is going to be Y minus 1. Awesome. This is going to give me Y squared multiplied by Y plus 1, multiplied by Y minus 1 equals 420. But Y plus 1 and Y minus 1 are good friends, when you multiply them together, kind of like conjugates, you get difference of two squares, which is y squared minus 1. Awesome. Now, I have y squared and y squared minus 1, so we're going to use substitution one more time. Let's call y squared, or let's set it equal to u. All right? 2u. All right. So it's not going to be 2u, but it's going to be u times u minus 1 equals 420. Obviously, you can just go ahead and distribute this and turn it into a quadratic equation, so on and so forth, but I'm going to solve it differently because there are integer solutions. How do I know that? u and u minus 1 are consecutive integers, and, and 420 can be written as the product of two consecutive integers. What are they? 20 and 21. Therefore, u can be 21, and then this can be 20. The product will be 420. And to find the other solution, here's, what, here's a trick we use. We use the smaller factor, but the opposite of that. So it could also be negative 20, because then this can be negative 21. Notice that they are also one apart. That's the trick. Great. Now, we have two solutions, two sets of solutions for u, but u is, or do you say u r? No, u is y squared. So if u is equal to 21, that means it's equal to y squared. From here, we get two solutions. y is going to be square root of 21 or negative square root of 21. What happens if u is equal to negative 20? Well, you're not going to get real solutions. The solutions are going to be complex, non-real. And y is going to be from here. If you square root negative 20, you're going to get the square root of 20 multiplied by i, which is 2 root 5 times i, or the opposite of that. But remember, these are the y values. Why? Because this is y. Now, we need to find x, but what is x? x and y are related by some equation, right? Where is that equation? Why can't I find it? Well, here's the thing. We said that y is equal to 6x plus 5. Awesome. So, y is equal to 6x plus 5, but y is at the same time equal to plus minus square root of 21. I can write it with the plus minus sign. It's kind of nicer. Subtract 5 and divide by 6. Okay, let's do step by step. First, subtract 5 and then divide by 6. And guess what? You're going to get the solutions. Yay. And then for the second one, we're going to get y equals 6x plus 5, and that is equal to uh, plus minus 2 root 5i. And from here, if you subtract 5, you get negative 5 plus minus 2 root 5i, and x becomes negative 5 plus minus 2 root 5i divided by 6. So we're going to get two real solutions and two complex solutions to this equation. And why? Because this is a quartic, and quartics have four solutions. You know, some of them can be real, some of them can be complex. But that's pretty much it. And this brings us to the end of this video. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.